Good morning. Good morning, Yvette. I apologize for my tardiness. Recouping from the weekend. If you want to be on camera, just accept that. You don't have to be. <clears throat> welcoming um, everyone. Matthew 25. Good morning, Tracy. Matthew 25. We're going to talk about Ready or Not. Who made that song? Ready or Not, Here I Come, You Can't Hide. Somebody made that. I don't remember who that was. But that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Ready or Not. Matthew 25. I pray everyone had a wonderful weekend getting ready for the inaugural. What was it? What is it he just doing tonight? State of the Union. Good morning. Good morning. Matthew 25. Ready or not. Okay, my Bible want to not come up. So there we go. <clears throat> Hallelujah this morning. Ready or not, ready or not. Hashtag it. Invite someone. Share. Tell folk to come on in. We need to get ready for the coming of our Lord. Amen. The parable of the ten vir virgin virgins. <laughs> Couldn't get it off my lips. What's up with that? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, all right. Good. Hello, Julia. Bless your heart this morning. So let's just uh, go right on into Jesus. Hold on, let me turn it. Amen, Daddy. We thank you for who you are, Jesus. And we love you this morning. We thank you, God, that we are safe in you. We thank you, God, that our hearts desire to be ready. We thank you that your word reminds us that the spirit is willing, but it is the flesh that is weak. So, Father, just bless those who are committed to this 5 a.m., 5.15 a.m. prayer on Tuesday mornings, Lord. Bless them and bless them indeed. And let them find your favor today. Let them find your blessings this day, God. They are ready. They are ready in the fourth watch to hear what the spirit of the Lord has to say to them his church. So God, move by your power, move by your spirit, move by your revelation, move by your love. We love you, daddy. In Jesus name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Ready or not, he's coming. Will you be found ready? Will you be found ready? We know the scripture in Matthew chapter 25 about the 10 virgins. Now I've always said that when I, I used to say, until I found the scripture, <laughs> that I wanted 10 bridesmaids. Good morning, uh, Brother Pastor. That I wanted 10 bridesmaids at my wedding. I used to say that until I ran across this scripture. And then I said, well, you know, maybe just a good five wise folk. Good morning, Sister Vicki. Uh, I said, maybe just five wise women. Now, I want to help us who are, who's single. I want to help us. When you get married, who who your bridesmaids are and who your groomsmen are are very they should be strategic it's not because they're a fit five size two or size eight or they're going to look good in that bridesmaids dress or that tuxedo is going to fit perfectly on them no you want to be very strategic in identifying who your bridesmaids are who your brides grooms are groomsmen are because their assignment is to stand uh, watch over your engagement, uh, over your wedding, and after the wedding. They are the people that prayerfully, there is something, if you hit a snag in your marriage, you can go to them and say, look, bruh, I'm feeling some kind of way right here, and I know it's not right, but, you know, bring me back down, right? Bring, bring me down, hallelujah, fr from the ladder that wants to escape. And, and it's the sisters that you would, Go to, or you don't even have to come to us because you know we're going to tell you, girl, you're out of order. You need to, amen, Jesus. So you want to be strategic in identifying your bridesmaids. So understanding the historical context behind 
Matthew 25, is important to understand. These bridesmaids were selected long ahead of time, just kind of like what we do. We we be having, you know, stand-ins if, if uh, Tamika can't be in the wedding. Now we got somebody else, right, on, on, on the side that will step in because we're adamant about having our 10 bridesmaids or however many you think you want at your, in your wedding. And so, but these women had months, if not years in some cases, to get ready for the wedding. They had months, if not years, to get ready for the wedding. So just as sure as the groomsman was presenting the dowry to the father to say, I want your bride, I want your daughter to be my bride, these bridesmaids knew their assignment, good morning, Brother Ken, knew that they were to be a part of this wedding. So it's not like it was a last minute thing. It's not like the dress had been fit for uh, uh, Sonya and now Kelly got to get into it, okay? That's, that's not how this thing flows, ready or not, here I come. So, so hashtag that somebody, ready or not, you got to be ready. In this season, too much is going on for us to stay asleep. We got to get woke. Shake yourself and tell yourself, I got to stay woke in this hour. Oh, sleepy church, wake up. Wake up. You got to get ready for what God wants to do in your life and what he is already doing in the kingdom. Many of us are missing it because we're not doing the work. We're not preparing for God to move in our lives. God, listen, you're not, I say it all the time. You are not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. You are not waiting on God. God is waiting on you. Oh, I'm waiting on the Lord. No, you're not. No, you're not. God told you to do X. He told you to do Y. He told you to do A. He told you to do C. He told you to do G. And you still ain't done nothing. Mm -hmm. You started something, but you haven't finished anything. Now, a young lady at, at the training this weekend that I did, to God be the glory, for uh, those who just desire to sharpen their skills as speakers, some want to be uh, platform speakers. The blessing was one young lady, good morning, Brother Clarence, one brother, one, one sister said to me, she said, one thing about you Tuesday, and this is why I, I, I come alongside and I support, and if you're doing something, I want to be a part, because what you say, you do. And when you do it, you do it with excellence. That ain't got nothing to do with me because raggediness is set up in all of us, right? And so raggediness would want me to just kind of put something together. But the God in me, who is a God of order and a God of excellence, says, no, make sure that you have this and make sure that you have that and line this up. And maybe you start here and as you go along, you add components. Good God Almighty, you add components to what you're doing. You Listen, some of you, when you get the vision, you think it has to be the whole thing. No, you start where you are. Don't despise small beginnings. Don't despise small, despise small beginnings. This training, my goal was 20 people. But once I got in there, I realized there's no way I could have served 20 people. I could have served 20 people at the level of detail. We are training speakers. It wouldn't have been one-on-one. -on -one. We wouldn't have been able to do that. So by, by allowing God to start with a smaller group, I did say allowing God because we always try to tell him what to do. By allowing God to start with a smaller group of people, good morning, Brother Robert, uh, I was able to serve them. And as we go, we will grow. Amen. As we go, we will grow. But you got to get ready. <clears throat> Somebody hashtag this. <clears throat> Pardon me, beloved. As preparation in God's timing, you may not be able to hashtag this, but you could put it. When, when your preparation meets God's timing, opportunity will come. When your preparation meets God's timing, opportunity will come. Doors will come. You will be found ready. You will be found ready and fit. Glory to God for what God has for you. So Matthew 25 opens up talking about these 10 virgins. Now the Bible says that the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins. The kingdom of heaven right here on earth. You got 10 virgins. Okay. That, that in itself, 10 virgins in one place. Grown, 
people. <laughs> Glory to God. It's a miracle within itself. Glory to God. But we'll, we'll, we'll count the born again ones too. Amen. Men and women. But uh, 10 virgins who took their lamps. Now, remember I said to you, they had months, if not years, to prepare for this wedding. He said they took their lamps and went to meet the groomsmen. They went to meet the groomsmen, okay? Because the groomsmen, the women, <clears throat> pardon me, the women were at one house, and the groomsmen would walk by. So they had to get to their place. Hear me, somebody. you got to get to your place because the king is walking by. The groom is walking by. He is a husband man to you and to me, to men and to women. He's coming by. Are you in place? Are you ready? Are you in your place? Have you been working on your gifts? Has God told you to go get that degree? Has God told you to write that book? Are you in place? Are you doing what you're supposed to do? Are, what's your prayer life like? Good God Almighty, I bless God that you're up with me this morning. But what is your own prayer life like? What is your own study? Glory to God. Thank God for our pastors and thank God for the prophets and the ministers and the elders and those who get up and teach the word throughout the day on Facebook and on Sundays and on Wednesdays. But what's your own private time like? Because see, when he walked by, he might not, he's walking by for a particular purpose, for a particular person. Are you ready? Are you going to be ready when he walks by? So the Bible says these virgins are, are here and they got their lamps. The Bible says they arise to go and meet the groomsmen. And, and the Bible says that five of them, I mean, straight out in verse two, immediately, five of them were foolish, five of them were wise. Immediately. They didn't wait for a whole bunch of more texts and a whole bunch of more scripture. Jesus got right to it. Listen, five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. And let me tell you why is that foolish by definition. They, they didn't think things out. They didn't think so. It was not that they were stupid. It's not that they were stupid. They were careless. They weren't mindful. They weren't thoughtful. They didn't consider. They didn't count up the cost. Good morning, Sister Kathy. Good morning, Sister Lynette. They didn't count up the cost. They didn't, they didn't get themselves ready. They were senseless. They were silly. You know, Timothy talks about the silly woman. And there can be silly men too. But hear me. It's anyone who is not thoughtful, who is not considering who is not counting up the cost. The Bible is calling them foolish. They are denying the truth. They are denying the reality of getting ready, that the king is coming, that the groomsman is coming, that the call on your life is not going to wait on you. Glory to God. There is someone assigned to you, to your voice, to your giftings, to your calling. Listen. I bless God for a little bit of a prophetic gift. I bless God for the call of my life as a prophet. But how I operate in my prophetic gift is going to be different than how someone else operates in their prophetic gifting. And so you have to be ready to know when God is called Lazarus. Listen, it was many Lazarus. It was many Lazarus. But that Lazarus knew when God called his name. Do you hear what I'm saying? You need to know, Yvette, that God's talking to this Yvette Johnson and not that Yvette Johnson. That when God says, Lynette, God's talking to you. When God calls Robert, when he calls Kathy, that he's talking to you. There are many Kathys. And there are Kathys that have your last name. There are some Julias who got the same last name Payne. They may not spell it the same way, but you better know what it sounds like when God calls your name because he's passing by. He's coming your way. He's coming your way. He's in the neighborhood. Somebody say God is in the neighborhood. Jesus is in the neighborhood. If it's happening for her, God is going to let it happen for you. If it's happening for them, your time is coming because when preparation meets God's timing, the opportunity come. The opportunity will come. And so the Bible goes on to say that, that again, in verse 2, five were wise and five were foolish. It goes on to say the five foolish brides took their lamps, but they didn't take any extra oil with them. You don't know when he's coming. You don't know when the groomsman's coming. He's stopping at this boy's house. He's stopping at that boy's house. He's having his own groomsman's event, right? 
he, he picking up something here, he picking up something there. You don't know when he coming. So you got to be ready. Now we know the groomsman is Jesus. You got to know when he's coming. But even in the natural, you don't even know when, when your, well, maybe you do, when your fiance is going to pop the question. You got to be ready. You got to be ready. He might pop it with you with some sweats on or some jeans on, or you all blinged out, or maybe y'all at dinner, maybe y'all on the track, maybe y'all at an event. You don't know when that groomsman, when that man of God is going to come and approach you to say, will you be my bride? Will you be my bride? Will you be my wife? So the Bible says that the foolish ones, they got ready, they went to the location where they were supposed to be because the groomsmen was passing. They were wise enough to know that. They were thoughtful enough to know that. They were wise enough to know that. But yet, they didn't take enough oil. Uh-huh. So as the time delayed, because the groomsman was not uh, ready, he was not quick to come because it's his timing, not yours, not mine, because we don't know the day or the hour, whatever it is that you've been waiting on, Unless God has given you a time frame, you don't know. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say to me in our fast uh, last couple of weeks ago, he said, April, your life will change. In April, your life will change. Now, is that the beginning of April? Is that the end of April? Is that after April? Do you feel what I'm saying? He didn't give me more specifics than that. But I received it, and I'm standing on it. And I'm putting him in remembrance of it. Okay, Daddy, you said, April, my life's going to change. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that looks like, but I receive it in Jesus' name. So whatever that means, make me ready. I said this a few weeks ago or maybe a few days ago. Many, I see women, you're praying, God, change my husband. Help him to step in his position. Help him to walk in his leadership. And then when he gets there, you mad. You salty. Because for five years, 10 years, 20 years, you've been running everything. And now he's stepping into his rightful place as the king and the head. And he may not be doing it all right, right? Because he's been kind of letting you run everything forever. Or he's been running with a heavy hand, uh, 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 lording over you instead of loving Lord, okay? So now he's walking into that loving Lord position as head. And you salty. But see, you prayed for God to do it. Mm-hmm. But you didn't ask God to make you ready for when he did it so that you can accept the authority that your husband is now walking in and you can get under his leadership. You can submit. Hallelujah. You can rest and hallelujah. And then you praying him into wisdom. Y'all better hear me. You got to pray them in to wisdom. I'm not saying that men are not wise, but the Bible refers to wisdom as she. That's all I'm saying. I'm just saying. Just look in Proverbs. Most of the time, wisdom is referred to as she. So when you are praying for anything, whether it's you, the Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, that the treasures of God are hidden in his wisdom ah, and his knowledge. So if you want to know what wisdom looks like, you got to get in Jesus. You got to read his word. You got to have a relationship with him. You got to ask him, God, give me wisdom. Whatever's going to happen in April, whatever you're going to do in my business, whatever you're going to do in my marriage, whatever you're going to do in my church, whatever you're going to do in my ministry, whatever you're going to do with my giftings, give me wisdom. Wisdom to manage this. Wisdom to know how to treat and to talk to people. Wisdom to know how to love her as Christ loved the church. Wisdom and grace me. Give me grace and give me wisdom so that I apply this thing according to your word, according to your heart, according to your way. Ask God for wisdom. So these foolish virgins. The Bible says that about in verse 6 it says, but at midnight there was a shout. The groom is coming. So I don't know what time they expected him to be there. Maybe they, they thought, they because they started early in the morning on their journey. So it's midnight. Now remember the watches of the night. So he he's arriving. He's arriving. Hear me, beloved. He's arriving at the third watch. This is the midnight. He's riding at the third watch. So it started to get dark. And, and I don't, I'm, I'm not quite sure why their oil burned out so quick. I mean, why was your oil burning in the day? The, the light, the, the sun should have been your light. I didn't say something right there. Why are you, 
taking your reserves and using it on something you shouldn't be using it on? Why are you emptying out your bank account for him? <clears throat> Why are you keep letting your grown kids shrink you to zero every month because they don't know how to manage their money? Why do you keep enabling? Why are you using your reserve? Why are you emptying yourself out for something you shouldn't be emptying yourself out? Love them, pray for them, teach them how to budget. Teach them how to be ready. Because the ant, the Bible talks about the ant who knows how to do their work in season so that when lean times come, the ant has something stored up. Why are you, why are you using your reserve? So I'm, I'm, I, I never quite understood why their oil burned out. I mean, what? I don't know what time it get dark in Israel, but, you know, depending, like here, what, about 6 o'clock? In this time of year, it starts to get dark. So that's six hours. Let's just say they had six hours worth of oil in their lamp. The Bible says that there is a cry. The groom is coming. Third watch. The groom is coming. And uh, uh, they ain't ready. So this is what the foolish ones say. They turn to the other ones and say, uh, give us some of your oil. They, they turn, they turn, uh, they turn to the wise ones. They turn to the wise, uh, wise bridesmaids and say, give us some of your oil. Listen to me right now. You quit letting people pimp you, pimp your oil, pimp your anointing, pimp your gifts, pimp your talents, pimp your treasures. Get your own oil. I came ready. Why you not ready? I brought three pairs of stockings because I know stockings run all the time. Why you ain't got an extra pair? You knew we were going on vacation. Why you only brought $50? And now you want me to, you know, hook you up on us getting in there. No! Come ready. We don't know what's going to happen. And there's nothing wrong, beloved. Let me help you with you helping people. But there's some people called leeches. There's some people called manipulators. There's some people called, uh, uh, you know, want, want sack chasers, uh, want to just ride on your coattail. No, 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 no. You need to be ready because you're hearing the warning. You knew the grooms was coming. You knew this day was coming. You've been asking for this day. Why aren't you ready? I'm, I'm about to say something. You want her fit in a lean size 12, but you ain't been in the gym in 18 months. Hello, I said it. You want her fit and perfect, know how to cook, know how to clean. You ready for a wife, but you ain't ready to be a husband. I'm just here to help. I'm just here to help. This thing has to be balanced. This isn't about anyone being perfect. You know, you got an 800 credit score and she got a, a 600. That, hey, we can bring that up. But a lot of times we're looking at other people to have what we're not willing to bring to the table. We want them to be excellent at something, but we're not willing to be excellent at anything. Again, this is not about being perfect. This is about knowing your worth and knowing that you are ready. How many of you men who are single that's listening to me could say, I'm, I'm, I would be, I'm a good husband. One, I'm a good man. One, I'm a man of, two, I'm a man of God. And I know I will be a good husband. I will be a great husband. I am a king to the queen that God will send to me. How many of you can say that? Because I know how to talk to her. I know how to treat her. I know how to love her as Christ loved the church. And if I don't know, I'm asking God to teach me and to grace me to give me wisdom. How many of you can say that I'm a good find? When he finds me, he's going to find a good thing. Yeah, you cook. Yeah, you clean. You know how to budget. All of y'all, all of us, our credit score might be a little jacked up, right? But I'm a good person. I know how to support a man. I know how to come alongside a man. I know how to shut up, but I also know how to speak up. Get yourself ready for what it is you want. God is calling me to do this. God is calling me to do that. God is calling me to... Some of y'all say God calling you to the nations. He ain't calling you to the nations. He's calling you to your address. Get that right first. And then maybe he'll call you to the nations. Be found ready. So here are the, uh, here are the foolish brides. Remember, foolish means <clears throat> not foolish means thoughtless, not sensible, not reasonable, 
So here you go asking the wise ones for their oil. So you want to ask me for what I did. I did what I needed to do to get ready. But I needed, needed to do, I did what I needed to do to prepare myself for where God is taking me. And now you want me to give you all my secrets. Now let me say this. I have friends who, if they ask me, T, how did you do that? I have no problem with telling them that because re relationship, relationship. So how, how do you do that? How did you do that in your business? Or how did you do that? And, and I'm not looking for the, the trade secrets or they're, you know, hopefully they're not looking for the trade secrets, but I have no problem with doing that. But the person that I just met or then only done coffee with, or, hey, can you tell me how you do your this, that, and the other? 20 years. 10 years, five years, I did the research, I invested. Relationships warrants some people asking you for your oil. At two o'clock in the morning, I need your oil, Sister Tuesday. I need your oil, Sister Yvette. I need you to pray. Six o'clock in the morning, you get a call. I need you to pray. I, I need this. There are relationships that warrant that. And you know what you're going to do? You're going to step up. But there are other people that you like. Now, how many times we've talked about this? You knew this day was coming. Why are you not ready? I've given you direction. I've coached you. I've given you advice. I've prayed with you. And you still coming over here asking me? No, babe. These wise ones was like, peace out. We ain't giving you our oil. <laughs> Somebody, oh, that's not Christian. That's not being loving. That's not loving your neighbor. Well, hey, at that moment, they don't have the gift of helps or the gift of mercy. Go get your own oil because you knew this day was coming. So the Bible says that the foolish ones leave. They have to leave their place. They got to leave their assignment to go and get what they should have brought with them in the first place. No, nah, no. So I had a weekend where I, I we stayed at a hotel to do the training for the speakers. I had in my mind, let me bring this particular thing. And I walked out of the house and didn't bring it. So praise God, I live close enough that I could go back home and get it. And as soon as I did it, someone asked me for it. And so I said, thank you, Lord, that I had time. I had time to go and get that. A lot of times God will grace us. He will give you time. Come on, somebody. He'll give you time to backtrack and to fix that thing. What has God told you to go back and fix? What has he told you to go back and get? What has he told you that you need to repair this before I'll take you to that? You need to go make this right before I will give you that. I, I'm about to say something. I don't know why I'm saying this. Somebody that's listening to me or will listen to me, you're divorced. And you need to go apologize to your ex. You want to get married. You want to get married. Mm -hmm. God wants you to be married, but you need to go back and say, I'm sorry, forgive me. And this is why you're having conflict in the relationship that you're in. And you're starting to say things like, man, she reminded me of my ex, man. He, she, she, who he's reminding me of my ex. No, maybe, maybe not. But God said, you need to go get this thing right before you move on to that thing. God has called you to start a church. And you left the church that you were with wrong. You you need to go and apologize to your pastor, to your leadership. I'm, I'm helping you. I'm helping you. Because it is important before you move on to the next thing that you settle the last thing. I remember this season in my life that God had me reach out to gentlemen that I had dated. And, and the question was, Tell me what you saw in me that you think I should improve on. Now, interestingly, uh, it was three of them. And three of them did it a couple Good morning, Brother Rod. They, good morning, Blanche. They did it different ways. But this was, the, this was the caveat. Do not use this as an opportunity to bruise me. Do not use this as an opportunity to abuse me. I just need you to tell me what is it that you saw in me 
in that season of my life that you would encourage me to work on to have a healthy, lasting, loving relationship. Now, we know that all men are different. All women are different. There are similarities. There are some basic foundational things in all of us. But that helped me. And then my next statement to them was, listen, I don't typically like this if I, if I hurt you, if I offended you. I typically don't like that because if somebody's mad at you or they're salty, then you did. It ain't no if to it. So my statement to them was, listen, I'm not sure what I did that may have hurt you or that did hurt you or that offended you, but I do ask that you forgive me. And my second question, third question is, what was it? If I did something that hurt you or offended you, please tell me what it was. They were honest to tell me. Some of us need to just do that examination. Before you move on to the next thing, ask that boss. If you have that type of relationship or ability to reconnect with them, hey, you know, we, you, you, you let me go. You released me. What was it? What was it and why was that? I mean, you can perhaps get that in your exit interview, but I'm here to tell you, you need to go and settle some matters before you move on to the next. So here we are. The wise bridesmaids said to the foolish ones, no, we're not giving you our oil. Go get your own. So they leave. The Bible says that they leave. While they were going to buy other oil, the grooms became in verse nine. And those who were ready went with him to the wedding feast and the door was shut and it was locked. They went from, listen to me, Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When you are ready, God will take you from where you are to where he desires for you to be. Good God Almighty. And that door that you are to walk into will be open. It will be open and Jesus will escort you in. Hallelujah. He will open it and he will say, enter in. Hallelujah. And behind you, that door will shut because the doors that God has for you, it is they are for you to open. They're not for anyone else. They're for you to open. The Bible says that when the groomsmen came, good God almighty, when the groomsmen came, that he took the ones who were wise and they went to where the groomsmen was headed and the Bible says they went in, the door was shut, and it was locked. When you are ready, when your preparation meets God's timing, opportunity will come. And the door will be open, and it will shut behind you because it's your door. It's your door. He said, ask, seek, and knock. Many of you are not asking. You're not seeking because you ain't up praying. You ain't read nothing. Good God Almighty, I thank God for those who connect at Fourth Watch Prayer. But beyond this, spend some time with Jesus. Make me wise, God. Again, Colossians says, the wisdom of God is found in him. You want to know his wisdom? You want to know who he is? You got to be found in him. You got to be found reading his word, opening it up. God, what does this mean? What are you saying to me? What are you saying to me about me? The Bible says he went, they were ready. They were ready. The wise ones were ready. Their lamps were trimmed. They had more than enough oil. But when the, when the foolish ones get back, the Bible says later the others came. And they said, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But Jesus replied, Jesus replied, I assure you, and most solemnly I say to you, I don't know you. I don't know you. We don't have a relationship. Oh, see, this says something. This is good, Jesus. This says something. I never noticed that. What translation is this? Amplified. I never saw that. He said, wait a minute. So you're saying to me that people who don't prepare for him coming, you don't have a relationship with me? Because if, if you understand I'm coming, you understand I keep telling you, get ready. And I'm not just talking about his returning to get the believer and, and, and those in Christ will rise first and, and then the rest of us will be caught up. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about right now. There is a readiness for you and for me that he is implying in this scripture, and actually it's not even implied, it's said, that if I've told you to get ready and I have a blessing for you, why aren't you ready? God's promised you a house. Go get a welcome mat. 
I like wind chimes. If you came into my my room or my office and, and where I live, my house and where I live, I have wind chimes. I love wind chimes. I bought these wind chimes. I love them. They're everywhere. Now, they should be outside, right? There is one outside. <laughs> but I love wind chimes. Go buy your welcome mat. What do you need? What do you need to buy? You believe in God to bless your woo? Go buy a bib. I, I'm going to tell a story. There was a young lady who was waiting uh, to, for her and her husband to get pregnant, and they were seeking God. And they, she found out there were some medical conditions of why they weren't getting pregnant. And the Lord told me to tell her, get three things. Uh, they were they were believing God to win a trip, um, to win a trip to, to the islands. And uh, they had sold the most tickets for this particular event. And they believed, and she said, we're going to win, we're going to win. I said, okay, by faith, this is what God needs you to do. I hear the Lord saying, get a bottle, get a bib, and a bathing suit. And she was like, what? I said, okay, believe God. I said, and when you go on that cruise, when you go on that trip, it wasn't a cruise, they were winning a trip to an island. I said, when you go on that trip, you guys are going to get pregnant. She was like, no, because we, I said, girl, boo, this is what the Lord said. So get a bib, a bottle, and a bathing suit. She did it. Today, I think their son is about 14. <laughs> Listen, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. If you believe that God is going to do something, maybe a prophetic voice, Maybe a prophet will come and tell you something and he's telling you or she's telling you to get ready. But if nothing else, you have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. He's in you and he's told you to do something and you won't do it. What's the hold up? Is it your fear of failure or is it your fear of success? Those who are not wise walk in fear and you have nothing to fear because God is with you. And if he's with you and he's for you, what can be against you? Do what the Lord has told you to do. The scripture tells us that the word that Jesus, the word tells them, uh, I don't have a relationship with you. I don't know you. Therefore, be on alert. This is verse 13. It says, be on alert, be prepared and be ready for you do not know the day or the hour that the son of God will come. You don't know because it's his timing. Time belongs to God. It don't belong to us. We walk, we walk in chronos. One, two, three, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. We walk in chronos time. But there is a kairos time that is set by the Lord. That is set by the Lord. And since you don't know when he's coming, you might want to be ready. Ready or not, here I come. You can't hide. I'm going to find you, Adam. Where are you? God knew where he was. He knew where he was. Ready or not, be ready. Be dressed because you don't know. Have your lamps trimmed using your gifts. This is the same passage where it goes on in Matthew 25 where he talks about the gifts and the talents. And remember, the man who didn't use his talent, God called him wicked. Up here, the person who wasn't ready, God called him a fool. I ain't saying it. The word says it. Be found ready. Be found ready using the gift that God has for you. Doing what God has put you in the earth to do. What a joy. What a joy to wake up to purpose. What a joy to wake up to readiness. What is it that you need to get ready? One of my goals, we came into this when we first started this a few months ago saying supernatural debt cancellation. And I'm looking for supernatural debt cancellation. But I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. My debt is student loans. It ain't a bunch of credit cards and all that foolishness. But I hate them student loans. They are of the devil. I keep saying it. So I believe in God for supernatural debt cancellation. But I'm talking to the student loan people. How can I do this? How can I do that? Being consistent with paying them down. Oh, my God. It will be a lifetime. With three degrees? Yeah, it's going to be a minute. But God can do anything. But you do your part and watch God do the rest. You do your part and watch God do the rest. God has a purpose and a plan for you, but you got to be ready. You already win. Because Emmanuel lives, we expect victory every time. We believe, therefore we win. So you don't have to trip on this. Just make sure you are using, you are ready. Do not be found like the five foolish bridesmaids. Be found ready. Because Jesus is coming. He's in the neighborhood. He's walking your way. He's ready to drop that thing on you. Listen, you're bringing your tithes and your offerings, I hope, into the storehouse. And the Bible says that he will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. You over here, 
You over here, not ready. Not ready. Not ready. How many of y'all get in line at the grocery store or at TJ Maxx or wherever you at, and you get in line and you're like, oh, man, I forgot something. And you hoping, because you didn't moved up in the line, and you hoping that that line, that space in line, good morning, Lisa, will still be there. But you got to get out of line and go over there and get that because you forgot. Let me ask you a question. Is it because it wasn't on your list? You didn't have it on your list, your shopping list? Or is it because you didn't come with a list at all? And this is why you get caught up at Walmart buying stuff you ain't got no business. I keep telling people they put something in the vents and you walk out of there and get more stuff than you're supposed to get. You got to be ready. You got to be prepared. And when that blessing is poured out on you, you got to be where you're supposed to be. You got to be in the spot where you're supposed to be because it is in that place that the blessing is going to be poured out. Get your tail to a church. I said it. Get to a church and get planted. It amazes me how many people, oh, I'm just going through some right now. And I'm, yeah, I'm not, hey, boy, I ain't seen you at church, bro. Where you been? Where you been, sis? I ain't seen you. Oh, I'm just going through some, but then why are you not in church? Oh, I'm, you watching us online? Are you watching my other spiritual father that he don't know he my mentor, T.D. Jakes? You watching folk on TV? You watching Joyce on TV? Yeah, write it on the tablet. Make it plain. Write your stuff down, what your goals are, what, what it is you're supposed to be accomplishing. We're still in January. You got time to do it. Write it down. What is it that you're supposed to be accomplishing this year? Write down 10 things. 10 things. Just 10. Just 10. 10 things. One of my goals is to get healthier. To what's to detox. Thank God for Blanche Benedict. She has a wonderful process to help you detox your body and get healthy. Wonderful business. Yeah, she can talk to y'all about it. Blanche Benedict. Find her on Facebook. Listen. Get healthy. But you got to be in the place so when God walks by, your, your preparation will meet his timing and opportunity will come. And this is God's will for your life. Your stuff is dangling. The mistletoe. The mistletoe of blessings. Good God. It's, hey, it's right here. It ain't over there. It's right here. You got to get up under this so that opportunity and prepar so that preparation and timing can kiss. And opportunity is going to come right there. It's going to drop. Your mistletoe is right here. Your mistletoe of blessings is right here. It's right here. And you over there. You over there, God needs you right up under this thing where the anointing is flowing, where the glory is flowing, where the no oil is for, flowing, under your, from un, your pastor, your church. Why are you not there? And because a little bit of something good is happening, you're like, well, God, it's okay. It ain't gonna last. Drip, drip. Ain't no flow. It's gonna become a drip, drip. You're gonna be living in a reservoir versus a flow of glory. But the mistletoe of God's blessings, is right here and you over there. God needs you to get right here so that there can be a kiss. Your preparation and God's timing will kiss right in this spot. An opportunity is going to come to you, baby. I just believe God for your life and I trust him and I adore him. And I thank you for being with me this morning. Plan your work and work your plan. Amen. Amen. Plan your work and work your plan. Faith without works is what? dead. You got to do something. There is a waiting season in God. I get that. I wrote the book, Waiting, Mastering the Unavoidable. You can find it on my website, drtuesday.net. You can also find it on our publishing and speakers website, atkspf.com. Advance the Kingdom Speakers and Publishing Firm.com. A-T-K-S-P-F.com. Order the book, Waiting, Mastering the Unavoidable. Yeah, there's a time to wait on God, but most of the time God is waiting on us. If he spoke something to you, you need to do it. You need to move and do it. You need to do it orderly, but you need to do it. God told you to start a church, start a ministry. You ain't under nobody to get no training. It ain't time. Don't go get your bar. Don't go do that yet. Get some training. Get some equipping. Get some study in you. Be, be sent and not one who just went. Good God Almighty. Wonder what would have happened with these five foolish bridesmaids if they would have come. And the reason they need the lamp is because the path, oh, Jesus, that's good. Oh, that's good, Jesus. The path from where they were 
The path from where they were to, oh, Jesus, the path from where they were to where they were going, even though they were finding G, even though they were following Jesus, they needed the lamp to see where they were going. The Bible says he is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. So you need the lamp of your anointing, the lamp of your eyes of wisdom to know, to follow God, to stay close. And so you need the lamp so you can look about you to see where are the snakes. That's good. This is why they needed to the oil. Even though you're following Jesus, it's snakes along the way. It's traps along the way. It's ditches along the way. So even though we're following close to Jesus, it's just some stuff that you're going to have to face in life. That even though you're following Christ and God is in you and you are in him, that you still need the lamp of the Holy Spirit. You still need the wisdom. Of God to say, should I go this way? Should I go? The Bible says that you'll hear a voice behind you and it'll tell you which way to go. The Holy Spirit is your teacher. He'll tell you which way to go. To miss this, to miss that. Don't deal with them. Don't deal with that one. No, he ain't the one. She ain't the one. That's the one. Go this way. So you still need the lamp. So this is why they had to have oil. Because one, they didn't know where they were going, even though they were following Jesus. It was dark. And they didn't know how long it was going to take them to get from where they were to where God was taking them. And you using up your reserve, your energy, your wisdom, your knowledge, your insight on people who ain't trying to get ready. You trying to save them. You can't be their Holy Spirit. Good morning, Sister Pamela. You can't be their Holy Spirit. They can be a mentor, you, you can be you can be a help, but you can't be their Holy Spirit, you can't be their God. They gotta, they gotta have their own relationship. Jesus said, I don't know you. I don't have a relationship with you. You gotta have their own. They can't get into heaven on your prayer life. They can't get saved on your prayer life, on your fasting, on you turning over your plate. That's cool, fast for them because you want their breakthrough, you want them to get deliverance, but at some point, they need to pray for themselves. People come, uh, Minister Tay, prophetess, well, can you tell me what this prayer, what, what this dream mean? You know what I say? Well, did you ask God what the prayer meant? Oh, you, I got the flu. Can you, you got the flu. Can I pray? Girl, you better go take some NyQuil. Boo. Do you hear what I'm saying? I love you with the love of the Lord and God loves you more. You must have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ because you don't know the way you go. He told Joshua, stay close, stay close, stay close to the ark. You don't, you don't know the way in which you go. So you must stay close, but don't touch him. But you got to stay close. You got to stay close. So ready or not hashtag it. Here he comes. So be found ready. Your preparation plus God's timing will bring opportunity. I speak the blessings of the Lord over you, and I thank you for joining me this morning for Fourth Watch 5 a.m. prayer, power teaching. I'll see you next week. I love you with the love of the Lord. Keep me in your prayers as I keep you. Remember, uh, the men's conference is April the 7th. Women, you are welcome to join us at 2 p.m. It, it is at West Side Missionary Baptist Church off La Paz Trail. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you for the thumbs up. Thank you. We are praising God. That's how we praise him. That's how we give him glory. And I pray that something was spoken in this word to help you to know to be ready for what God is about to send into your life. He's coming your way. He's in the neighborhood. He's walking down your path. Let him be the lamp unto your feet and the light unto your path and allow him to guide you to your next. I will see you next Tuesday. God bless you. God bless you. Be encouraged. <laughs>